Hi, today's lab will be on static route. Basically, what is the requirement for today's lab? Okay. As you can see from the requirement given, okay, you are to configure the following on router 1, R1 only. R2 and R3 configuration .txt file is provided. You are supposed to restore the file into R2 and R3, okay, which is a common practice in the corporate world or the production environment, whereby network engineer actually prepare the configuration upfront okay, before they actually went down to the site to upload the configuration onto the routers so as not to waste time doing the initial configuration from all over again on R1 itself we are supposed to configure the host name the executive privilege password class console and virtual terminal password with the password Cisco you are supposed to disable DNS lookup as normally these roles are performed okay, by a server in a production environment okay. in order to prevent yourself uh, from being locked out okay, from the router okay, whenever you are away for a while okay, when you are doing configuration on R2 or R3 or when you are doing configuration on R1 or R2 okay, we are supposed to prevent okay, or to lock out so that we don't have to always allow the router to prompt us for password okay, to go past the privilege executive mode okay, and also the console login you are also, also supposed to prevent unsolicited messages from appearing on your screen while you are doing your configuration to disrupt your configuration what are the explicit requirements? for R1 configuration okay, you are supposed to show that you have you are using PC1 okay, hyper terminal to configure R1 using console port with regards to static route okay, on R1 you are supposed to configure a default route to reach R2 and R3 network this is to mean that you have only one optimal route okay, to reach R2 and R3 whereby you don't have to do, perform specific static route to reach R2 and R3 local area network on R2, you are supposed to configure the appropriate static route to reach R1 and R3 local area network. And on R3, you are supposed to configure a summary route to reach R1 and R2 network. You can see that okay, for R2 network, it belongs to 172.16.1.0 network. And R3, R1, it belongs to 172.16.3.0 network. You are supposed to make use of summarization okay, to merge these two routes together. So let's start off by restoring the configuration of R2 and R3 router. We start off with the text file given okay, by, uh, to us. Okay, you are supposed to copy the whole configuration. Control C compared to your router packet tracer activity go to router R2 go to enable mode configuration terminal mode and use the paste button to paste your configuration in double confirm your configuration by doing a show run you can see that the hostname has been configured the enable secret password has been configured the IP address for 5700 has been configured. To take note that okay, the interface has been shut down even though you have pasted in your configuration. So you will need to go into the specific interface to actually perform a no shut. Your serial interface, IP address, okay, and at the same time it's still in shutdown mode. Okay, and your line console and line VDY configuration. So go into your configuration terminal mode go into interface FA00 okay, and perform a no shut similarly for serial interface 000 perform a no shut and interface 0001 perform a no shut and that's it you are done with router 1 okay, initial restoration for R3 perform the same task enable complete T open up your R3 configuration file copy the whole text file 
paste okay double confirm your configuration to make sure all the configuration are in go into config t mode go to interface fa00 do a no shard at the same time go to interface s001 which is the interface that is being used on r3 to connect to r2 perform a no shard okay. so by now you will see that r3 interface between r2 and the local network should be up and running so now we are left with r1 as you can see that from the configuration we are supposed to do the initial configuration from scratch for r1 okay using the console port so how are you going to do this double, double click on the connection category icon choose the usage of a console cable click on the pc rs232 port which is a common port on the pc connect it all the way to the router console port open up your pc activate the terminal which is hyper terminal version on packet tracer check that you have all the default configuration there okay press ok you should be in okay in hyper terminal mode okay on packet tracer go to enable mode on r1 configuration terminal so we start off by doing your host name r1 next we will be do, doing the exactly privilege password will be enable secret class next we will be doing your line console zero configuration okay you're supposed to do a password of cisco okay let's perform the configuration for requirement five and six or so you are supposed to prevent auto lockout okay which is the command executive timeout zero zero okay basically if you need to enable back okay the auto lockout okay features of the router okay basically you just replace the zero zero number with the minutes or second that required take for example if you want to auto lockout your router while, while you're away from your terminal after 10 minutes basically you just need to replace the first zero with 10 press enter to prevent unsolicited methods messages basically you just do the command login synchronous okay short form s y n c okay enter that's it you have done for your line console zero next we go on to line vdy zero to four to the same configuration again which you have done for your console port okay password cisco executive time out k zero zero to prevent lockout and login synchronous okay that's it you have finished off your configuration for requirement three five and six to disable dns lookup just very simple command no ip domain look up okay and that's it you have finished your configuration for router one the first six initial configuration Next, we we'll go on to configuration for the interfaces. Okay, so we are supposed to configure our FA00 interface first. IP address 172.16.3.1. Subnet mask 255.255.255.0. As stated in the topology, do a no shard. Next, go on to serial interface 000. IP address 172.16. Dot two dot one default mask two five five two five five two five five dot zero do a no shot okay take note that okay on R one side on the serial interface is supposed to be a DC as can be seen from the clock icon okay or basically you can do a show controller zero 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 okay to take note okay of the fact that zero 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 interface on r1 is your dce whereby there's no clock now so what we're going to do now is to set your clock rate 64,000. okay and that's it you have perform the initial configuration for all your routers okay if you take a look at the routing table as of now okay by performing a ip show ip route 
Okay, you will see that all your directly connected interface, depending on the number of interface that you have, should be up and running. Okay, represented by every abbreviation C. So R1 and R2, basically you can see that there are two interfaces. So you'll be looking at two directly connected okay, routes that is being introduced in the routing table. For R3, as there are three interfaces, you should be getting three directly connected interface routes that is in your routing table. Let's double confirm it by doing a show IP route okay, on your router R2. Okay. You can see what I have I meant from the command I made just now. Close it. Okay, let's start off with okay, the requirement 2. On R1, you're supposed to configure a default route to reach R2 and R3 network. So on R1 itself, you can see that there are, there are two interfaces for your packet to exit. One is through your FA00 and one is through your 0000. So basically, we know that in order to reach R2 and R3 network, I need to exit out through my local exit interface 0000. Or I can also opt to choose the next hop address, which is the IP address of 0000 on R2, which is 172.16.2.2. Let's open up router 1. Exit out from interface mode. So how to perform your default route? Basically very simple. Just start off by doing the command IP route. Basically, the default route are always represented by a 80 number, a quad 8 number, which is 0 .0 .0 .0, 0 0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0. Okay, this will never change. The default route will always start off with the command IP route 80, followed by either making use of the local as interface or the next hop IP address. Okay, as let's make use of the local as interface as of now which is 0, 0, 0, 0 on R1 which I use to exit to reach R2 and R3 press enter okay, and that's it you have finished you have finished the default route configuration on R1 let's double confirm by doing a show IP route okay you can see that a static route static default route configuration has been introduced which is represented by a S string. S string. Okay. Another thing to take note of is before I actually set the default stat default static route, okay, you can see that the sentence the gateway of the last resort previously when I do a show IP route is not set, as been shown here, gateway of last resort is not set. Once I have configured a default static route, okay, basically the gateway of last resort has been set to Okay, to reach any network okay, within your R1 router. In order to double confirm your configuration, you have another option to do it okay, basically by doing a show run. Okay, scroll down all the way until you see your IP route 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, which you have configured just now. So after finishing R1 configuration, let's go on to the next requirement which is option 3 on R2 you are supposed to configure the appropriate static route to reach R1 network and R3 network let's start your router exit out from your interface sub mode start by doing your IP route okay so let's configure static route to reach R1 network first so basically for R1 network is 172.16.3 network 172.16.3.0 network followed by the default subnet mask 255.255.0 if you are only given your IP address okay, how can you actually derive your network address basically the process is very simple we know that take for example PC1 IP address 172.16.3.10 okay. you are supposed to do a ending operation and operation okay with the subnet mask 255 255 255.0 so from what we have learned in subnetting 
any number that is n with 255 we always get back the same number okay where else for any number that ends with 0 we always get back our 0 and basically the result from an end operation between your IP addresses and your subnet mask will be your network or subnet address so in order to reach the specific okay, network okay, that is connected to R1 basically we are going to point to the network address that belongs to R1 go back to the configuration again so after performing the two parameters that is required for static route, IP route next the last parameter will be either using your local exit interface or your next hub address so let's just use the local exit interface in order for R2 to reach R1 network we know that I need to exit out through the 0000, 0, 0, 0 interface on R2 so let's do that and that's it you have configured a static route to R1 local area network let's proceed to configure the static route to reach R3 local area network okay similarly use the same process that you you have I've shown you just now to get the network address for the local area network that's connected to R3 okay which basically will be 192.168.2.0 255.255.255.0 okay. in order to show the different method okay, of alternative method okay, of configuring a, a static route instead of using the local exit interface now on R2 okay, which is used to reach R3 network which is 0001 let's make use of the next hop address basically from R2 the next hop is R3 which is the serial 001 interface on R3 which you can see that IP address is 192.168.1.1 so we're going to configure that okay so to take note that okay any static route configuration you can use either way either you can use the local exit interface okay as the last parameter or you can use the next hop IP address let's double confirm by doing a show IP route so you can see that I have successfully configured two static route okay one going to R1 network through the 0, 0, 0 interface local as interface the other static route to reach R3 local area network okay via the next hop address 192.168.1.1 okay, and you have finished your requirement for router 2 okay. so for R3 you are supposed to configure a summary route okay. so as I explained just now okay, you are supposed to do a summary route to reach PC2 and PC1 network okay. in order to find out the summary route okay, for your network that you are going to reach okay. Okay, you are supposed to convert your network address that you have for the different network you're trying to reach to a binary number so that you can see okay, the subnet mask that you will be using to configure your summary route okay, to know that which are the bit onward that you will actually start to make use of it for your host bit so I know that okay, my two network are 172.16.1.0 and sorry and 172.16.3.0 okay and to include the intermediate network that is connected between r2 and r1 is 172.16.2.0 okay if you convert this to the binary representation will be 10101 10 okay dot 16 will be 00 16 one two three four okay dot one will be zero 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 one dot zero eight zero followed by one seven two dot sixteen dot two dot zero
okay so from here you can see that if I start to compare between the bits okay from bit 1 all the way until bit 22 this is the point whereby the bit start to differentiate because of the fact that 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 is different that is to mean that I will need to make use of the subnet 22 okay, for my summary route to represent to merge the three routes to become one route as can be shown here okay so basically my subnet mask must be first octave a b of one second octave a b of one and third octave six b of one followed by two zero and last octave all zero convert this convert this to its decimal representation will be two five five dot two five five dot two five five So sorry, the third number should be 252 and basically end all with dot zero. So this is how you're going to get your summary route okay, to represent the whole network. So on R3 itself, very simple, just need to configure one static route, exit out from your interface sub mode to an IP route, followed by okay, the network address that is going to represent the whole group starting from definitely is 0 dot 0 followed by 255 255 252 dot 0 okay okay and let's just use the local as interface on r3 to reach r2 and r1 network which is 0 0 0 1 okay and that's it okay you have successfully configured your summary route for R3 to reach R2 and R1 network. Let's double confirm by doing a show IP route. So you can see the two line here. Okay. By basically to, in order to reach the network 172.16.0.0 with a prefix of 22, which is the subnet mask which I used just now, 255.255.252.0. Okay, I will be able to reach R2 and R3 network. In order to make sure that you have successfully okay, make done your configuration, just do a ping okay, from R3 local PC3 to PC2.16.1.10. And let's wait for the router. You can see that we got our reply okay, from PC2. Let's do a ping from PC. Uh, from PC3 to PC1 to make sure we can reach R1 local network which is 172.16.3.10 okay. so basically that completes our lab for today okay which is supposed to enable static route default static route and summary route okay for a small network